Good morning, everyone. I just want to have this short exhortation that can lift up our soul in serving the Lord. And it is about God still answers our prayers. Do our prayers really makes a difference? Of course. They do even across the miles. Prayers can do great things in our lives. And that's my testimony. God is so good in my life when I have this mission that even though that uh, things are not good in the mission field, but the Lord is protecting me, the Lord is guiding me, and do great things in my life. And the first thing is that truly God works in a mysterious ways in our lives. It says here that ordinary people and that extraordinary prayer, even though that we are ordinary people, ordinary person, but if we have this kind of prayer in our lives, God can do great things. And as what James chapter 5 verse 16 says that the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man always avails much. So the Christian's most powerful resource is communion with God through prayer. And as we have this kind of prayer that God touch, touch this, uh, this powerful hand of God, as we pray in the Lord earnestly, fervently, the Lord will do something, great things in our lives. So some people see prayer as the last resort to be tried when all else are fails. So this is the last thing that we do if we have these troubles in our lives, in obstacles in our lives, the last re resource that we have is to pray. But prayer should come first because God's power, God's power is infinitely greater than ours. And the second thing is prayer is a spiritual warfare. So Satan is the greatest opposer of prayer. Satan may not be troubled in our much of our preaching, but once we pray, once we pray, he is terrified. He is trembled. So we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against Satan and the forces of darkness. It says here in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 in, L in LT version, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the ancient world, against mighty powers of this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So we need to be equipped for this warfare. So the Apostle Paul commands to us the full armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 18. It says here that the helmet of salvation, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil, and the sword the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and the boots of the Gospel, is what we are sharing the Gospel of God to the people. This is God's equipment for our spiritual warfare. So Satan is out to get us to fall, and he's he devises strategic schemes. And in verse 11 says that so we have to aim at our at our victory. And Satan aim also at our downfall so that we become spiritually discouraged or disqualified or ineffective in our prayers. So the armor of God is God's powerful countermeasures against Satan's schemes. In as Joshua 
going to the battle. So he's courageous because the Lord is with him. So as we fight against this spiritual battle, we will join hands together in our prayer. And I like to sing this song, Every Child Will Fall. Wait a minute, no, no. 